Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to share some watercolor pencil techniques with you, both using the watercolor pencil just dry and also wet. So we're gonna start off just by sketching a plum. And um, it's basic, uh, basically a circular shape. You may have some bumps and you know, a little unevenness here and there to make it look natural. I'm using a reference photo from Unsplash and I'll link that down below if you wanna follow along with the same picture I used. I'm sketching with a purple watercolor pencil. You can use whatever brand you have. This is a very inexpensive set from a brand a company called Pagos, and I'll link that down below as well. And then I'm switching to a green pencil to sketch on the leaf that's kind of folded over. I thought that was really interesting and would lend itself to a yeah, complex enough version that's interesting and exciting to paint, but not so... Um, complex that it's confusing. Now looking at the reference photo, I see that there is this kind of sky blue highlight on the top of the leaf and on the side of the plum. So this plum is hanging from a tree. You'll see if you click on that reference photo and um, it gets a lot of kind of like that cool blue reflection from the, uh, the natural light. There's also a pretty strong shadow on the plum from the leaf. So I'm gonna go ahead and color that in with a reddish purple. And then I'm gonna add that reddish purple color along the plum other places that I see it. I'm not pressing very firmly with my pencil because I want to, um, I don't wanna scar the paper as I'm working and I'm just working on watercolor paper. But as I work on later with dry pencil, you're gonna see that I actually purposely put some marks down to keep that are kind of scratchy because plums have this kind of wax bloom look on them that um, you know that you'll wanna see at the end, but no, not quite yet. We'll be able to blend all that out. For the stem, I do color pretty firmly because I wanna deposit quite a bit of color there. And I recommend anytime you're using a water-based pencil to swatch it out because it will look a lot different um, if you just look at the tip of the pencil versus what you get once you've colored with it and then once you've wet it. So it's real important to make a swatch like I have, or you know, it doesn't have to be that neat. Just uh, swatch it out so you can see what it looks like dry and what it looks like when you wet it and then you gradiate the color. So I colored like two thirds of my boxes with the watercolor pencil and then I wet half of the colored area and dragged it down. And that's how I make those gradiated swatches. Just so I know what I can get from each color. And you can, you know, I just swatch it on any watercolor paper and keep it with your tin of pencils so you don't have to swatch them out every time you go ahead and use them. Now I'm using a small golden tacklon brush and that's what I recommend for watercolor pencils. They are sold typically at your craft store or your art supply store as acrylic paint brushes. Uh, just look for the golden hairs or white hairs and those are gonna work really well for you. I like those instead of watercolor brushes because watercolor brushes hold a lot of water and if you get a ton of water on your watercolor pencils, what can happen is it can actually end up washing away your pigment and just kind of um, puddling so much and pushing the pigment to the outside rather than just what you wanna do is liquefy it where it sits rather than um, wash it out to the edges. So that's my tip there for brush choices. Um, the Zen and Menta All Media Brushes by Royal and Langnickel are inexpensive and uh, they work really well. Just look for the golden hair. As long as you get brushes with golden hair or with um, white hair, you should be all set. So now I'm liquefying this first layer of color on the plum. Now you can see that even though I didn't put a ton of pencil down, I'm getting a lot of color. So you might wanna go easy that first layer that you do, especially if you're not used to using watercolor pencils. So this is our wet layer. And um, the nice thing about this is once you've wet your watercolor pencils, is that it brings back the tooth of the paper. So if you've ever colored with colored pencil before, and then you try to go put another layer and you get to a point where it won't take any more color, well, the nice thing about starting with watercolor pencils is that you get to keep that tooth of the paper. So you can layer up with either your watercolor pencils or even regular colored pencils uh, going forward. I like to liquefy this first layer because then I get to see what I have. Um, if I were to layer up more pencils and liquefy it later, I might end up with way more color than I need. So this gives me a nice base to work from. And like I mentioned, you can keep layering up on this. Now the only thing to think about when you're layering up watercolor pencils is that you might get to um, a certain amount of layers, it might be like three or so, when you start lifting up the pigment underneath when you try to put more layers and wet them. So that's just something to consider. Um, 
you won't be able to layer indefinitely. It is You are going to get to a point where when you try to layer more, you end up, that water ends up wanting to lift up what's down below. Unless you're using a watercolor pencil such as ink tents or even the Albright drawer pencils, they tend to sop into the paper, soak into the paper and stain it a little bit more. But most other watercolor pencils behave like these. I'm just making sure that I uh, think about the values, make sure I get my darks dark enough and my lights light enough. So here I'm going in with a very dark brown and I am enhancing my dark shadows. Now, if I add some water to this really dark, uh, these dark marks that I'm putting, they will get a smidgen darker. But if they're dark enough and sharp enough as is, I could just leave them alone. So there's no law saying you have to add water to your watercolor pencils. When I am adding water in an area like this where I want to keep it nice and crisp and dark, I use a small brush. So I'm just using a little small round brush there. Now I'm adjusting my values on the plum. Since I liquefied that first layer, I can see that I need some darker colors there. I also wanted a little bit more of a cooler purple, so that's what I'm adding. I'm just going in small round strokes so I don't lay down a lot of direction with my marks, and I'm refining the edges of my plum. When you want to add detail or refine an edge like I'm doing here, it's a good idea to use a sharp pencil and you can use a handheld sharpener or even an electric sharpener for this. I find a handheld sharpener to be pretty sufficient for this type of application. But other than that, you can really kind of use your pencil down until it's blunt and then you can resharpen it. You don't need to keep such a sharp pencil as you would if you were using uh, regular colored pencils. I'm using the edge of my pencil for the most part to lay down color. I find that's a great way with watercolor pencils to put the color down if you're gonna liquefy it because um, it doesn't scratch a paper and leave any dents. So you wanna, you, you might wanna leave a dent somewhere if you're like trying to get a detail or maybe you're using a, um, a wax-based pencil and you want to make a resist. That's a good reason to you know lay down a firm um, stroke of pencil, but I find when I'm doing a watercolor pencil, I tend to just color lightly and then um, add my water to it to so I don't get those lines. Sometimes I want the lines later, but I kind of reserve that towards the end. I refer to my swatch chart a lot when I'm working with watercolor pencils because I can't just look at the tip of the pencil and get an accurate view of my color like I can if I'm working with a wax-based pencil. So I don't always swatch, swatch my wax-based pencils, but I always do for watercolor because I just wanna be sure that I'm gonna get what I expect. And you really can't trust the ends of your pencils if they've got like a painted uh, um, color reference. That's just for a general idea. A swatch is just a good idea. Now, when I need to fill a large area and I don't want to have um, um, I don't want to have too many brush strokes, I'll use a flat brush. And what I'll do is I'll I'll wet it and then I will just kind of scrape off all the extra water I can, and that will let me just kind of uh, liquefy the paint and kind of smudge it around a little bit. I am trying to build up that kind of um, mottled waxy texture, and that's why you'll see me moving the brush kind of in crisscross fashions and with an angle brush like this I can use the point that the angle point there to sharpen up edges so it's really handy and I'm starting to build up that mottled um, texture that you see on the surface of a peach and you don't want to add too much water at this stage or you'll end up lifting up what you have underneath and I wanted to add some shadow to the underside of the leaf now the leaf is kind of Interesting because where it's rolled over and it's catching so much highlight, it's almost white. It's like white with a tint of like bluish green to it. So that's probably as dark as that curved over part of the leaf is going to get. But um, I do need to add a little bit of um, of depth underneath the leaf where it's shaded and you can see a little bit more of the, the green and yellow tones. You can pick up color from the tip of your pencil with a damp brush if you want to, if you're afraid of putting too much color down or if your paper's wet and you need to adjust the color. I don't recommend you draw on wet paper unless you are trying to leave a firm line that isn't gonna um, blend out very easily. Experiment with your brushes to see what works best for you. You'll probably find you'll have a handful of brushes that you love to use every time. Now I'm using a white watercolor pencil to get some of that soft um, backlit highlight around the edges of the, the uh, plum, especially on the top and bottom. And I'm also using it really firmly now to add some of that waxy bloom. Now the surface of the plum looks almost kind of scratchy with the wax bloom there, so I didn't mind if I left any scratchy marks at this point. At this point, I don't have to wet anything or I might just wet little portions of an area if I need to intensify color. 
I'm still holding the pencil pretty far back on the, uh, the barrel when I'm going on the center of the plum so I don't put too much pressure down. Now I know my shadow should be a little bit darker so I'm going in with a really dark, um, dull kind of indigo color and I'm layering on some brownish plum colors as well and really building up the shadows that I see but also keeping some of that waxy bloom area. And now I'm doing some scratchy marks with a um, more reddish plum color to get that texture that I'm seeing on the on the plum. I'm gently patting areas with a damp brush just to soften and um, blend and activate some of the colors so they show up a little bit more. And I just kind of do it here and there because I want to keep some of that scratchy texture and I want to keep some of that waxy white bloom from the, from the plum. The shadows need a little bit of um, darkening so I'm adding water and you can see the pink kind of start to puddle up where it's wanting to lift the layers down below. So I know I'm about the point where um, I'm putting in all the paint I can. So now I'm actually lifting out some of the highlights with a damp brush. You can just kind of scrub it out just by wiggling your brush there. Um, so, and then blotting it off with a paper towel to remove any of that extra pigment. So you can do that as much as you want. And I'm using a kind of um, scribbling motion with a filbert brush so that I can lift off those kind of waxy looking areas. And I can also refine the edges whenever I feel like I need to because you will puddle and pool pigment on the end of your brush and you'll be able to manipulate that around as well. I also recommend turning your work as you're going so that you can always be approaching your object with the bristle, the the bristles kind of pointing away from you. I just think it's easier to make a crisp edge when my brush is kind of like butt, butted up against the outside edge of uh, what I'm trying to sharpen up. I'm adding some darker blue shadows inside the, um, inside the leaf there to bring out some depth. And I think that really helps a lot. Getting your values right is so important when you're painting because um, you can have your colors completely off. As long as your values are good, you're gonna be fine. And I'm adding some of the little blemishes on the leaf because I think it's those imperfections that really make things look um, believable and realistic. And for some highlights, I am going back in with the white pencil and you probably wanna sharpen it before you go and do any details so that you have better control. And then uh, for some of the areas where I couldn't get a crisp enough line, there was like kind of like a, a white streak on the plum, I went ahead and put that in with a gel pen and then um, I'm adding some highlights. And a lot of times with the gel pen, what I'll do is I'll just color it and then I'll smudge it with my finger. You can also use a damp brush and smudge out a gel pen if you work quickly because that will be water soluble for a little bit till it dries. So you can always soften it that way. Um, like I'm doing right here, just kind of getting that uh, milky gel pen ink to spread around a little bit. Gel pens are wonderful to have in your colored pencil or watercolor pencil or watercolor stash because it can bring back those bright whites when you need them at the end of a painting. I couldn't get the depth I wanted with my watercolor pencil, so I used a Prismacolor in indigo wax pencil to get the shadows under the um, the leaf there and back to my watercolor pencils again. I'm using them dry uh, in certain areas next to the gel pen to give it that little bit of um, almost blemished area. If you feel like you want to build up more layers but you're worried about lifting the watercolor pencil underneath or maybe more dry watercolor pencil won't stick, go ahead and use some wax-based pencils. This periwinkle blue is just perfect for capturing the uh, natural light, which is kind of like a blue cast to it that I was seeing on the plum and the leaf. It was a little grainy looking, so I just used a little odorless mineral spirits to um, blend out any bits that looked a little too harsh. You could also use a clear alcohol blending marker for that. And I'm using a white Prismacolor pencil. I think probably almost all of my drawings and pencils, uh, paintings end up with a little bit of white Prismacolor at the end because it's just got a beautiful um, opaque quality to it that uh, really can help you refine edges and bring out highlights any place that you need them. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it gives you some inspiration to break out your watercolor pencils and draw along with me. Thanks so much for watching and if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Until next time, happy crafting.